I'm Stacy Widlitz. Today I'm talking with Hawkins and Brimble, one of the fastest growing men's grooming lifestyle brands in the UK. But it's not just the UK where this brand is making its mark. Hawkins and Brimble partnership with Alibaba has led to explosive growth in China and now represents 25% of the overall business. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. You've built this amazing, authentic British brand in Hawkins and Brimble. Can you tell us about the inspiration for the brand? I came up with the idea of launching uh, Hawkins and Brimble in 2015 when I was frustrated by the lack of choice in the supermarkets and, and chemists for men, um, especially uh, something that smelled really good and also was suitable for sensitive skin. I want to talk about China. So you entered China less than a year ago, and it's already a quarter of your sales. Can yeah. you talk about the relationship with Alibaba and how they've kept you close to the consumer? We work with a distributor in China, and um, the Tmall uh, platform is absolutely crucial to our brand. If you've got a great product, great quality, um, with, again, this British heritage seems to be very popular, uh, then you can do really well on, on, that, on that platform with um, a lot of customers. Chinese and British culture are so different, yet this idea of the traditional British gentleman really seems to appeal to the Chinese consumer. Can you talk about using insights from Alibaba and how you communicate differently to that customer in China? A lot of the um, younger Chinese men being very successful in business um, and want to look smart and reflect uh, reflect that image of, of being successful and I think a British heritage seems to be um, very popular in terms of um, showing your success. Have you been surprised at the speed of the feedback with the insights and how have you taken some of those and translated them into perhaps a strategy change on the ground? Most people on the platform will give a review which is not as common in, in other countries. So useful for a brand like ours, um, especially, you know, we're not the size of, of one of the, the big, big brands. So we can make changes to products much faster and adjust our strategy uh, to allow for that. But having, you know, one channel that can do so much business means that we don't have to worry so much about um, selling offline, um, selling on lots of different platforms. So it's, it's great for us to be able to have that really focused strategic approach with them. And you're a sustainable brand. Is that increasing in importance in China as much as, as it is in the UK? Again, starting to. I think uh, the UK has um, seen a massive change, step change in the, even in the last sort of two years, uh, which is why we've, we've changed our packaging um, and we've just recently done a launch into aluminium re refillable bottles. Um, I think in China it's slightly newer, that concept, but uh, we're getting a lot of interest, so I think that's going to be good for us. Can you talk about uh, festivals, events? What kind of events in China are you partnering with Alibaba on that have helped you stay close to the consumer? Yeah, um, last year we did uh, a number of launch events in barbershops in Shanghai and Beijing, um, which was very successful. It's a model that we've used globally. Um, we've launched in uh, London in barber shops. Um, we've launched in Amsterdam, all over the world. Um, and it really brings the product to life. People can actually sit in a chair um, and have, have a barber um, style or, or trim and use our product and really experience how it should be used properly. Uh, we did. Uh, the Beauty Expo and also the um, Barber Expo in Shanghai, uh, which were really successful. It was great that our products could be seen by, by uh, many, many men. And you talk about the consumer experiencing your product through the barber shops. You have a mobile barber shop, <laughs> yeah. and we've talked a little bit about perhaps will you go into services? Will we see mobile barber shops driving around China and the UK in the future? I think we might, yes. Um, it was one of my entrepreneurial mad moments. Um, I, I bought a, a brand new Mercedes, uh, the biggest Mercedes van you could, you could get, um, and saw a gap where we, we wanted to take our um, barber chairs to ex exhibitions and events, and it was always such a pain having to carry really heavy barber chairs up, up into lifts and stairs. So I so, um, thought, well, why don't we just put them into the back of a van, 
um, but we went a lot further. We, we um, had the interior designed in a really super luxury um, fit out. Stephen, I'm sitting and right behind you is a backdrop of the London Eye and Big Ben. The Chinese consumer used to come to London and discover brands and take that love home with them. Obviously now we don't have tourism. Do you think the consumer will come back and will rediscover brands again on the ground in Europe? I'm, I'm absolutely positive they will. Yes, I think um, when things calm down uh, with coronavirus, I think, I think they'll return in, en masse. Um, London's such a popular city and so many cool new brands launching in, in the city all the time. Um, I'm, convinced, I'm convinced they'll return. Stephen, if you could go back a year, what would be the advice that you would give yourself going into China? I think um, if you've got a great product, you need to be prepared for potential volume um, that, that you might sell. Uh, we got a little caught out with our water for made where um, our distributor was running out of stock um, very quickly. So in the end, uh, ended up having to um, air freight a full jumbo jet of water per made to stay stay um, on the shelf, so that that would be <laughs> demand to be is, aware a, is of. a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have, but it's also quite stressful. <laughs> and were you surprised at, at which the speed that you received insights from Alibaba and how you had to react so quickly? Yes, definitely. I think um, seventy two percent of uh, young men in China shop online, so it's a great way of um, seeing immediate um, sales results and uh, feedback for your products. What is your number one piece of advice for an emerging brand that's looking to export? Certainly keep your overheads low as possible. <laughs> um, my team all work from home and we always have done. Make use of uh, digital marketing at the beginning. Um, it's an incredibly uh, powerful way of getting your brand name out there globally. Um, and something which in the past startups didn't, didn't have that benefit. Thanks so much for joining us, Stephen.